Is that all you got? What's good, everybody out there on YouTube? This is your man, Shadik Stick, dropping some hot Faraga on this mic. Today, we're talking about Final Fantasy VII Remake, and more specifically, a rumor that has been posted on Reddit by user Steelers4190. Now, before we start, we can take this all with a grain of salt, because I, I, <laughs> I don't use Reddit, so I don't know if this guy is a reputable source, but what he has said is that he knows someone basically involved in uh gaming journalism and that the amount of con most of the stuff that he covers is japanese games and with this he has given them details for final fantasy 7 remake that are going to come soon and i think this is something that's interesting to look into if you guys would like more final fantasy 7 content or you just want to watch more of my videos remember to stay up to date hit that subscribe button like the video it really helps out make sure that notification bell is ticked too but let's just jump right into this. So according to Steelers uh, 4190, Final Fantasy VII Remake is going to have a huge presence at E3. There's going to be a lot of information. He says a blowout here. And we're going to get a release date for the game. Which if you guys already know, I made a video on this uh, with my boy Avatar Yaya. I talked about the uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake actually being at E3 and having a massive presence. I thought this was the game that Square was going to save for E3. Which is why in my State of Play video... I made the assumption that it wasn't going to be at state of play because e3 is around the corner now obviously they can showcase a lot more at e3 but i thought that was going to be the real thing that pushed their e3 to the top and guess what i was wrong people can be wrong people are angry on that video for some reason that i thought final fantasy 7 remake was not going to be at the state of play but still looking at this they also talk about how the game will be split basically the from the beginning of the game to the death of Aerith will be the first part of the game because if you guys don't already know it got reiterated that final fantasy 7 remake will be split into multiple parts we didn't know if this was just going to be one two or one or two parts one two or three parts we didn't know how it was going to be split up and now that he says it's from one part will be from the beginning to the death of Aerith, and the other part will be from the death of Aerith to the end of the game actually makes a lot of sense because that when you play final fantasy 7 that's kind of how the game is split up half of the game is, is basically everything with Aerith. the other half is everything after she dies this is really the turning point of the game and i think that's why they did that it helps sell the notion that you can pick up the later half of the story with the next iteration of the game which i think is actually pretty smart and from what we're hearing here one of the main reasons they're doing this the game like this is because they're going to expand on a lot more story ports and one of the biggest portions of that is actually the inclusion of yuffie and vincent because if you guys haven't played the original final fantasy 7 they are optional characters i remember actually playing as a kid the very first time i played the game um i got yuffie but didn't get vincent it was by accident because you go into this forest you do this crap and you get yuffie in your party after you beat her and apparently here is going to be optional for the most part up until a certain important the game because they're actually going to try to incorporate yuffie and vincent in the core story a lot more and if they're going to do such a thing i think they would have to explain uh expand upon a lot more plot points and one one other thing they have here is that a lot of the places in final fantasy 7 remake are going to be getting given a breath of new or a, yeah breath of new life basically and that's something that i really like a lot of the towns and cities are going to feel more uh, organic the roads present and stuff going to feel like they serve realistic functions because again final fantasy 1 or final fantasy 7 was a ps1 game and with that comes the fact that it was strictly limited by hardware there's just a lot of places that were dead but had a lot of trains or roads and stuff and that's one thing i really am glad that they're fixing about the original 7 in this remake they'll also expand on Genova and her role in the entire story but basically i guess they're going to try to make her i guess more frightening in the sense of how important she is or just how how mysterious she is and that's one thing i i think they need to delve more i feel like Genova is one of those untouched parts about seven that I really think could do a need needs a lot of working because you find out at the end of, uh, when you play seven that Sephiroth really wasn't even Sephiroth for most of the game it was just Genova manipulating you making you think of Sephiroth and if you felt like you got spoiled you had 22 years to play the game get over it one thing they actually talk about here is that the sephiroth we saw in the trailer is actually from the uh the nibelheim flashback and it kind of proves that you know sephiroth and cloud weren't in a reactor as we had thought beforehand now 
Let's talk about the juicy bits here. The biggest part I want to talk about is the way gameplay actually functions. And one of the biggest changes is to the way limits work. Limits aren't just, I guess, hard specials in this game. Some are more like commands. I, I think I think a la Kingdom Hearts, where you know you're able to access them at all times. One example he gives here is Braver. But say for instance, Cross Slash is a limit break and acts kind of like a super or ultimate move. I think a la the big situation grand magic commands in Kingdom Hearts 3 or the finishers in Kingdom Hearts 3, which is actually really smart when you think about it. Now, I wonder how they're really going to execute this because, you know, they show the level ones. So we're going to have a level one braver. So that's you, you just choose it from the command menu. But then cross slash is going to be the limit break itself. And then level two will be blade beam, which you choose from the uh, menu. But then climb hazard would be the limit break itself. I think this is really cool. But are there sets that we have to choose? Are we able to choose the combinations of moves? What exactly? exactly is going on here because i'm really interested in how they're going to execute basically giving us the different sets of moves is it just one uh special attack limit and then a limit break or can we switch through them on the fly i hope it hopefully it's on the fly hopefully they give us more limit breaks because they said that uh characters that basically have the full tree of limit breaks you know cloud tifa uh and barrett they if you have if they have the full tree this is how their limit breaks would work and also what it says here in this rumor is that magic and summon materia actually work pretty similarly to how they work in final fantasy 7. you equip them in the slots each character equips them in each slot but the thing that is actually different is all the characters have different stats because if you played final fantasy 7 the original one they were all kind of just blank slates they all had the same statistics they all had the same stats throughout every time they got an item it was basically the same everyone got similar stat boost but what you could do is you could configure your materia to basically tailor each character to a certain type of role or a certain style of play and what's interesting about final fantasy 7 remake that we actually saw in the trailer is you're able to switch between each character while you're playing so maybe you want to use tifa but what happens with tifa instead of her being a blank slate she has fit this role maybe she has the role of the monk in the final fantasy series and you have to basically tailor her her items and her materia to fit that role boost her attack but her magic is not as strong maybe just give her stuff that can heal and maybe some lower mp magic to basically help her in combat but when it co push comes to shove she in general is going to rely on her physical attacks or maybe cloud is going to be the all-rounder in this situation where cloud basically is he's a jack of all trades but not really a master of anything and then maybe barrett acts as somewhat of the mage or since we're able this is an action rpg maybe he relies specifically on long range attacks instead of up close and personal attacks despite my dude being big and since he's big actually will all of his uh close range combat moves will they be big sweeping hits instead of you know fast rapid combat like tifa would ma maybe use because she's a martial artist i don't know i really think it's interesting when we look at just the possibilities with this new gameplay style you're really gonna have to focus on making your close combat guys really good at that and your ranged combat guys really good at ranged combat and i really like that i think it adds a new layer of strategy to final fantasy 7 remake that the original game just really didn't have because you just had these blank slates and you just made them good at everything now guys remember all of this stuff you can take with a grain of salt but what i really do want to say is i hope a lot of this stuff is actually true we're gonna get a lot of um gameplay and announcements related to the game at e3 according to this leak or this rumor and i just hope it's true because final fantasy 7 is one of those games that i think really needed a remake to push it into the modern age because it's one of the most iconic video games of all time not just one of the most iconic square games not one of the most iconic final fantasy games but one of the most iconic video games period this is a lot of people's first final fantasy first rpg first foray into jrpgs and it really solidified jrpgs in the western market well yes there are games like pokemon that helped to break that barrier i think final fantasy 7 really is the game that solidified that jrpgs are legitimate games in the western uh audience's eyes because before that jrpgs were just not liked by the west the west did not like them previous final fantasy games actually got a lot of lower scores because the west just simply did not like rpgs or again jrpgs i don't know tell me how you feel about this leak down in the comment section below 
are you hyped for what we're getting from Final Fantasy 7 Remake? Are you hyped to see if this is true? Do you think this is true? Do you think this is false? I mean, a lot of the stuff here is very believable, like the release date being somewhere around November 2019, because I'm pretty sure the game is going to come out this year. It looks like it's going to come out this year. They've had about two or three years to work, at least on the first half of the first game itself in the Final Fantasy 7 Remake series. So I wouldn't see any reason for it to not come this year, unless it came very early next year. And November is around the time people are buying stuff for the holidays. It just really makes a lot of sense. Well, I don't know, guys. Again, tell me how you feel about this in that comment section below. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Share this video out with your friends. Make sure you hit that notification bell to stay uh, updated with all my latest content. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and join the Discord. That's where you can stay up to date even if the YouTube notifications don't work. Just remember, Hot Faraga turns into Cobra Saga. Make sure you chill out with some of my other videos. Peace, kiss, kiss. Bada, bada.